from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. And welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Jack Lynch, and I sincerely welcome you to celebrate with us. The Daily TV Mass ministry is made possible because of the generous contributions of many of our Mass sponsors. We're supported through the gifts of all our donors in a very special way through our monthly donors. This particular Mass is being offered for all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our Prayer Intentions book. During this Easter season, the hope that comes from the risen Lord may it strengthen those in our community suffering from emotional or physical difficulties. And we thank all of our donors for their gift. And so we begin, as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. We gather this day in the presence of our God, who is good, gracious, and has gifted us so much. We take a moment to acknowledge our lack of gratitude and not giving thanks to God for all that we have received. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace Give increase to the peoples who believe in you. Look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now, when the rulers, elders, and scribes saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the men who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered Peter and John to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called the two apostles and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. 
After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. I praise you, Lord, for you have answered me. I praise you, Lord, for you have answered me. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. I praise you, Lord, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. I praise you, Lord, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. I praise you, Lord, for you have answered me. day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now after Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. And she went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when the disciples heard that he was alive, and had been seen by her, they wouldn't believe it. And after this, Jesus appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they didn't believe them. 
And later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who had saw him after he had risen. And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And this is the gospel of the Lord. I have to admit that every time I read that phrase in the Acts of the Apostles, describing Peter and John as uneducated and ordinary men, it comes, to me, comes across to me as a judgment or a stereotype that somehow implies that they're uneducated or unschooled, or the uneducated or the unschooled are not wise or intelligent. To have not had the opportunity for a formal education doesn't mean that one lacks in intelligence or wisdom. There's so many unschooled with women and men who are very wise and well-educated, principally because of their life experiences. You know, I recall very well when I worked in Peru and later on in Central America, often the military and the police had a difficult time believing the ingenuity and the creativity of the poor. And that attitude brought them many times to accuse others of being the intellectual authors of any demonstration or any activity to reclaim the rights, the rights of the poor. And oftentimes that was focused on the priests and the religious. They just didn't believe that the poor people would be that bright, that creative, or could organize that well. But the reality is that they continually stereotype poor people as they did with Peter and John in today's reading. In the previous chapter, we know that Peter healed a man lame from birth by the power of the word. Peter and John are now before the rulers, the elders, the scribes, all of whom marvel at their boldness, but obviously don't recognize or appreciate that it was the Holy Spirit working in and through them and their words that brought about the healing of that man. Yes, God chooses the so-called foolish to reveal God's love and mercy. I think it's also important to realize that the most surprising affirmation of those leaders is recognizing them as companions of Jesus. They now acknowledge that although they thought that they had finally dealt with Jesus by crucifying him, they're still not rid of the problem of the teaching of Jesus and the disciples of Jesus. The authorities really are puzzled at what to do. What makes matters worse is they cannot deny the miracle, for the man who was cured is standing right there beside Peter and John. The leaders are really more interested in their power and their own ideology and well-being rather than the well-being of the lame man. The leaders see how different Peter and John are after the resurrection of Jesus in their boldness, in their self-assurance, in their empowerment by the Holy Spirit, and although warned not to preach or teach again, they cannot contain their joy, their belief, and their appreciation of the power of the Word of God. It's interesting that in today's Gospel, Jesus rebukes the apostles for not believing one another's stories of hope, of resurrection, and the promise of new life. When Mary Magdalene told the disciples what she had witnessed, they didn't believe her. Mary Magdalene's story is intimately linked with that of Jesus. When Jesus is crucified by the Romans, Mary Magdalene was there supporting him in his final terrifying moments and mourning his death. She also discovers the empty tomb, a witness to the resurrection, in fact, the first evangelist. But often the Mary Magdalene that lives in the memory of so many of us is quite different. The whole story of Mary of Magdalene as a prostitute fallen and redeemed, is a very powerful image of redemption. But as powerful as the image might be, it didn't happen. Mary Magdalene is mentioned in each of the four Gospels in the New Testament, but not once does it mention that she was a prostitute or a sinner. Most scholars believe that at some point, Mary Magdalene became confused with two other women in the Bible, Mary, the sister of Martha, and the other unnamed sister that we find in Luke's Gospel, both of whom washed Jesus' feet with their hair. And in the, sec the sixth century, 
the Pope at that time, Gregory, declared in a sermon that these three characters were actually the same, Mary of Magdalene, the repentant saint. But that myth and that unjust treatment of Mary of Magdalene continued from the 6th century until the 20th century. It was only in 1969 that the church officially declared that Mary Magdalene was not the penitent sinner. You know, I look back at that and I think of the stereotypes, lies, and rumors that contributed to the misrepresentation of a great woman. And I think hopefully all of us will learn from the injustice and recognize the hurt and the harm that comes about from innuendo, rumors, and lies, and the need for transparency, the need to recognize that we have a gift. The power of our words can heal or they can hurt. Mysterious divine healer, in everything we say and do this day, make us a finger of your healing hand. Make us sensitive to the wounds and brokenness of all of our brothers and sisters. May they heal us as we stretch out our hands to one another, for we are all one in you and your Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Please join me as we pray. And we lift up in prayer this day the many people who have written in, ask that we remember them and their intentions in this celebration. And so for all of them, we pray to the Lord. We pray that at this time of Easter, we may be more conscious of this presence of the Spirit as a gift to each of us and what we are called to do and how we're called to live as men and women born of the Spirit. For that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. When Jesus, after the resurrection, announced peace, we are invited to be peacemakers. And so we pray for that special gift for those areas of the world that experience violence. We pray at the same time that each of us may be a peacemaker in our homes and in our communities. And for that grace, we pray to the Lord. And for all of this, we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Yes. And pray, friends, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but at this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, and make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Till you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
and let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in this prayer from Father Henry Nowen as he encourages us to pray with open hands. Dear God, I am so afraid to open my clenched fists. Who will I be when I have nothing left to hold on to? Who will I be when I stand before you with empty hands? Please help me to gradually open my hands and to discover that I am not what I own, but what you want to give me. And what you want to give me is love, unconditional, everlasting love. Amen. And let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of our celebrants and all of us at the Daily TV Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday. A triumphant holy day Upon the 